of Ireland's passion for great local produce. I'll be cooking and tasting the very best of Irish food. Not only is the food refined, but it's delicious. And enjoying its legendary hospitality. Me and Rachel will go to the pub, we'll leave you till you get to <laughs> This is Ireland. to start my incredible Irish food odyssey than in its capital, Dublin. A city that's renowned for its warmth, its music, its literature and its hospitality. But this is an ever-changing city too, where once thousands of Dubliners would have left to find their fortunes overseas, the last 20 years has seen an influx of people from all around the world. And many a native Dublin are returning too. And that has made a really incredible impact upon the cosmopolitan food scene, which is truly exciting. A little later, I'll meet one of those adopted Dubliners and find out why she fell in love with the city and its cuisine. Uh, I just love eating things and birds, you know, a nice bird. I'll visit Dublin's most garlanded restaurant and meet two Irish food legends. I've never had an Irish coffee in all my life. I can't believe that. And I'll learn how to make a classic Irish potato cake. We're going to need a little bit of butter. A little bit of butter. A little bit of butter. But I want to start my culinary journey in Dublin with a trip to the pub. So I said to my producer, could we please go somewhere traditional and maybe have a pint and taste some Irish stew? And they said, yes, of course. And they brought me here to a cemetery. This, though, is Glasnevin Cemetery. And its graves are a history lesson in themselves. Most great heroes of Ireland's struggle for independence lie here, as do many of its great writers and artists. And perhaps only in Dublin would you find a pub in the cemetery walls, literally. The appropriately named Grave Diggers has been here since just before the cemetery itself opened in 1834, and it's been owned by the same family ever since. So I reckon that the latest man to take the helm, Kieran Kavanagh, must have plenty of stories to tell. Hey, go, John. Best pint in Dublin, therefore the world. Enjoy. Tastes good. Yeah. Why, why is there a pub next to a cemetery? Well, you're dead centre of Dublin, really. Glasnevin is the dead centre. The dead centre yeah. in Dublin, uh, brilliant. This, this was, uh, in 1833, when we opened up, that was the main gate to the cemetery. So all the major funerals went through that gate. And we had, obviously, thriving business because of that. In 1878, they closed the gate and they opened the main gate and bought the land in front of the cemetery so nobody else could build a pub. Because we had a little bit of a bad relationship with the cemetery because some of our customers were supposed to be going to funerals and they were a bit late. It might have been the priest was a bit late, it might have been the coffin might have been a bit late. Uh, the hearse might have been outside with the guys drinking inside. So during the famine, we were open. During the 1916 rising, we were open. During the Civil War, during the Second War, my family were still pulling pints. And you're still here. And throughout the centuries, the grave diggers themselves have been loyal regulars. When they were working, they would uh, knock on the wall with their shovel or um, a stone. So maybe two knocks for two pints or three knocks. And my dad and my grandfather would go outside and put their drinks through railing. So we would put them in like an earthenware jar or a jam jar. So lads, it looks like they're having a bowl of soup or a jar of tea or something. They're actually having a pint of Guinness or a jar, as it's called now. Before I had too much Guinness, it was time to have my first Irish meal. So I asked Kieran what would be the essential Dublin dish, and it was one he'd recently revived thanks to customers' demands. Coddle. The resounding thing the whole time was coddle, coddle, coddle. So coddle is a Dublin stew, and it's a very controversial stew. Everybody makes it differently. Like, I asked 100 people when I was working here, and I got 100 different recipes. Thankfully, Kieran has whittled these recipes down to just one and perfected his own Kieran's Coddle for the bar menu. I don't think I've had a stew described as controversial before, though.
Frankly, it doesn't look the most appetizing dish I've ever seen. And so what have I got in here, Kieran? I've got, well, it looks like I've got some potatoes. You can see potatoes. Yeah, it's a... Uh, parsley. Yeah, there's a broth we make with the bacon ribs, short ribs, which are there. Oh, I see the yeah, ribs. And that gives you a lot of flavour. And then it's thickened with potatoes and some onions and parsley and a little bit of thyme. There's the sausages. That's it. They look interesting, Kieran. Yeah, in Dublin they call them a few things. It's why coddle is kind of controversial, because um, some people might call it a widow's memory. So I kind of put smaller sausages in it. Some people like bigger sausages, but might like to keep it medium. Okay, now I understand the controversy. Uh, Kieran describes a dish probably better for radio than TV, and he took me through how he made it. Kieran starts by putting bacon pieces and ribs into a saucepan of water and brings it to the boil. When boiled, he takes the saucepan off the heat and strains and washes the bacon pieces under cold water. Then he adds clean water to the pan and adds an onion, potatoes and a little bit of parsley and thyme. He cooks everything for one hour before adding the sausages and simmering for a further 15 minutes. As the potatoes soften, they thicken the stew. And Kieran serves his coddle with batch bread and soda bread for dipping. I don't care what anyone says, it's delicious. It smells great. It smells really good for you. It's it's um, a ham and potato soup with sausages in it. Pretty much, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And I understand why you're using things up, but I get I get the controversy as well. I mean, that you've got a sausage floating in your soup. Well, it's basically people used to see sausages in the breakfast time. Ah. But if you think back to 18th century Dublin, there wasn't that many frying pans going around to fry off your lovely little sausages, so everything was thrown into a cauldron. In Ireland, on Friday, you couldn't eat meat. So if you have a pantry full of sausages and bacon, to last till Saturday, what you do, you boil them up. A little bit of fat goes to the top, kind of seals it up. Yeah. You crack it open on Saturday after a few pints and eat, off you go. You're obviously very proud of it. 100%, yeah. It's one of those dishes that was very, very hard to sell. And uh, you now I have to make literally buckets of it a day. Yeah, and I've got to say, my, my grandmother, on a, on a sort of Monday night, she would always make soup for the leftovers from the roast when yeah. I was a kid. And then we would get the old bread, and the old bread we would sprinkle across the top, we'd put it into big pieces. She sort of teach us to push it underneath the soup, and then that would soak up, and we'd eat that, and that was like having potatoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's great. I love it, which might sound a bit crazy, but I think it's gorgeous. When you come to Dolan, 